The regular meeting of the St. Joseph County Council, April 12th, 2022, is now called to order. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance and remain standing for the invocation, which will be given this evening by Reverend David Wetterlund, Jr. of the Grace Way Church of Michiana. pray together. Our gracious God and our loving Father, we humbly come before you this evening asking for your grace and your strength as this meeting commences and proceeds. We pray that you would be with each one and each issue that's represented here this evening. Would you give wisdom and would you give grace as deliberation takes place? Lord, we pray for this council that you would guide them, that you would strengthen them, Watch over them, protect them as they watch out for and serve the residents of St. Joseph County. We are thankful for their work. Uh, We are thankful for their service. And we pray that you would, again, be with them. We are thankful tonight, most of all, at this time of year, for Jesus and for his work on the cross, the resurrection that we will celebrate this weekend. We pray that you would do a work in all of our hearts, remind us of the glories of Jesus and all that he has done for us in our stead. And may that impact the way that we engage one another. And we ask all of this in his name and for his sake. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Reverend Waterlum. Next are petitions, communications, and miscellaneous matters. Ms. Hess. Uh, Mr. President, tonight we have appointments. Uh, I nominate Lance Rausch, St. Joseph County, to the St. Joseph County Area Board of Zoning Appeals. A reappointment of Andy Place, Jr. to on-site wastewater advisory board. Then we have a nomination for Janet Wilkfield Heideck to the Mishawaka Economic Development Commission. And this is just a nomination. It's appointed by the mayor. Thank you very much. Are there any other nominations at this time? Hearing none, nominations are now closed. Do I hear a second? Second. Mr. Hammond. Take a roll here. Mr. Krasinski. Yes. Mr. Nolan. Yes. Mr. File. Aye. Ms. Hess? Yes. Mr. Fig? Yes. Mr. Katanzright? Yes. Mr. Kanaraki? Yes. Mr. Root? Yes. Mr. Morton? Yes. Motion carries 9 0. Let the record show that the motion was voted and uh, passed by a vote of 9 0 for the appointment of Lance Roche to the St. Joe County Area Board of Zoning Appeals. Reappointment of Andy Place, Jr. to the On-Site Wastewater Advisory Board and the nomination of Janet Whitfield Heideck to the Mishawaka Economic Development Commission. May I have a motion to approve the minutes from the March 8, 2022 public hearing? So moved. Do I hear a second? Mr. Hammond? Mr. Nolan? Yes. Mr. File? Aye. Ms. Hess? Yes. Mr. Fig. Yes. Mr. Katanzarite. Yes. Mr. Kanarecki. Yes. Mr. Root. Yes. Mr. Krasinski. Yes. Mr. Morton. Yes. Carries 9-0. Thank you. Let the record show that the minutes from the March 8th, 2022 meeting were approved by a vote of 9-0. to zero. Report from the county auditor. No report. Report from county commissioners. No report. No report. Thank you. Report from any council special committee. Hearing none, next on the agenda, first readings. Clerk, will you please read bill number 5322? Resolution determining that the qualifications for an economic revitalization area have been met and confirming resolution number blank of the St. Joseph County Council declaring an area of that county to be an economic revitalization area, confirming resolution. Petitioner, uh, EVS Limited. Bill number 5322 is assigned to the Land Use Planning Committee. 
next on the agenda, we have resolutions. Um, bill number 5422, uh, due to unforeseen circumstances, um, that bill will be tabled, that resolution will be tabled until our May public hearing. So clerk, will you please read bill number 50-22? A resolution approving a fee for the physical eviction or ejectment, ejection uh, of a tenant or occupant of property following the eviction order of a court of St. Joseph County Petitioner Sheriff. Petitioner. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening. Uh, Troy Warner, attorney uh, for the St. Joseph County Sheriff's Department with an office inside the county jail, 401 West Sample Street. So this is, uh, we've got two fee proposals tonight. The first one is a uh, fee proposal that would allow the Sheriff's Department to charge a fee when the officers physically go out to a property to assist the landlord or the property owner with an eviction. Um, the fee is allowed by statute uh, and is capped by uh, IC code 3231-22 at $250 as a maximum. Um, and then there's also, uh, so long as the fee is not, the request for police is not made by a victim of abuse or crime or an individual in an emergency. Um, we currently have four other counties, uh, neighboring counties that charge a similar fee. Those fees range from uh, $75 to $100. Um, currently the process is right now, after a landlord or a property owner gets the physical order from the court, that the, uh, the occupant is to, re is to uh, vacate the premises. Um, they call the civil division, set a time and a date, and our officers go out and uh, assist with that. Um, generally, they're on site in a conflict resolution role, um, just assisting the landlord with uh, being able to change the locks, um, often assisting the occupants with getting their, their belongings out of, out of the, uh, the property. Um, about 50% to 60% of the time, our officers set an appointment to go out and uh, there's nobody there. Either the tenant has already got the notice um, and has left, or they were at the court hearing and were told to vacate and they've left, or the, uh, the landlord doesn't show. Um, if nobody shows up, our officers don't evict anybody or, or, or get rid of anybody, so they often go out to these properties uh, just in essence, wasting their time and our county resources doing so. Um, we had an instance, I'm gonna take just a second and tell you. So we had a uh, eviction a couple weeks ago. There was, uh, our officers were called out to assist and the individual was uh, a wheelchair bound senior citizen with no place to go. And uh, our officers worked with the landlord, bought some time, worked with VA and some social agencies. This, this individual had no, vehicle transportation. He told our officers, basically, you're gonna put me out on the street in the gutter. Uh, they got the landlord to give them uh, a week and a half and were able to find somewhere for this individual to go. I know, you know those aren't stories you hear about our officers, but uh, you know, we don't throw anybody out on the street if we don't have to. Um, the uh, fee we're proposing would be $75. It, uh, as was asked last time, if uh, there was a way to prohibit a landlord from passing that on to the tenant, uh, I talked to a couple of the judges that handle these and was told no. Unfortunately, state statute uh, preempts all landlord-tenant law. They don't want the local jurisdictions nosing into that. After Indianapolis tried to do some things to uh, um, stringent tenant rights, um, Currently the process, the court process, how it plays out is there is a, at the beginning of the, the filing, there is a hearing for immediate possession. Um, the, the landlord, the property owner, and the tenant go before the court. Uh, and uh, if the court awards 
the property to the, the uh, or issues an order to vacate the premises, then the tenant has to get out with a certain, I think it's within five days. Um, and then uh, generally 40 to 60 days later, there's a damages hearing in which the property owner comes and presents evidence on how much back rent is owed. Is there uh, physical damage to the property that needs to be uh, replaced or repaired and any other costs? And this is a cost that the judges expect would be brought to them by the, uh, by the landlords. Thank you. You're any, welcome. Any questions from counsel for the petitioner? Mr. Kanaricki? Mr. Ward, do you, do you have an idea how many evictions we do in a year? Um, I've got that. It's, I think it's written in the actual resolution. Um, it's, it's in the range of 200, I want to say, just over that number. Um, I do, the number is in the, um, and then I think oh, the last point I had, uh, this, these fees would go to the general fund. They would not go directly to the department. Um, so these would be, uh, in essence, county funds. Any other questions from council? Ms. Katan's right. Mr. Warren, did we clean up that one Scribner's error that we talked about last month in the bold section? Three hours versus three hour. Did we do that? No, should we, should we, we amend did not it? clean up that. Okay. Well, I make, I make a, a motion. A, there's an extra S in there. Yeah. I make a motion we amend the bill um, and the bolded section, section one, to state three hours versus three hour. I mean, I can, if, if Mr. Triple doesn't have, I'll send you, I'll email you the, the word version right now and make a change. Is there a second to that motion? Mr. Hammond? Ms. Hess? Yes. <coughs> Mr. Fig? Yes. Mr. Katanzarite? Yes. Mr. Kanarecki? Yes. Mr. Root? Yes. Mr. Krasinski? Yes. Mr. Nolan? Yes. Mr. Morton? Yes. Motion carries 8 0. Did you get Mr. File? Oh, that's right. That's right. Hi. Uh, he can't vote. Okay, I'm sorry. Yeah, okay. this one of the. Uh, bill number 5022 <laughs> has been amended. Any other questions from council? Hearing none, we'll open a public hearing on bill number 5022. Does anyone wish to speak in favor of this bill? Does anyone wish to speak in opposition of the bill? Hearing on the public hearing is now closed on bill number 5022. Do I hear a motion on the bill as amended? Move for approval. Do I hear a second? Second. Motion to pass bill number 5022 as amended was made by Councilman Nolan. It was seconded by Councilman Krasinski. Any further comments from any council member on bill 5022 as amended? Hearing on clerk, please, please take the roll. Mr. Fig. Yes. Mr. Katanzarite? Yes. Mr. Kanarecki? Yes. Mr. Root? Yes. Mr. Krasinski? Yes. Mr. Nolan? Yes. Ms. Hess? Yes. Mr. Morton? Yes. Carries 8 0. Let the record show that Bill number 50 22, was pa as amended, was passed by a vote of 9 to 0. Clerk, will you please read the next bill, Bill number 51? Dash 22. Resolution approving a police camera recording fee for the St. Joseph County Police Department for public video copies of county police body and dash camera videos and amending and updating existing department copy fees to comply with the state statute. Petitioner, Sheriff. Petitioner. Thank you. Uh, again, I'm Troy Warner with the uh, attorney for the Sheriff's Department. Um, as you know, the county police department is in process of implementing, implementing uh, body cameras um, and uh, new dash cameras with those that sync together. Um, we currently, as it is already, uh, receive multiple, anywhere from three to eight or ten public records requests for dash cam video. Uh, the vast majority, well over 90 percent, probably 98 percent, come from personal injury attorneys. There's a, uh, a car accident and uh, personal injury attorney John Smith sends a letter. I want uh, the, the report, all of the information, all of the dash cam, all of the body cam video from officers who responded 
to those crashes. Um, so we, we already know we're gonna get a large number of these requests. I think these two fees really both get to uh, promoting the efficiency of, of county time and, and resources. Um, state law requires the department to review all of the videos. So if you've got a car crash and our officers are there for 45 minutes and you've got four officers, you've got four times 45 minutes. So you've got uh, I don't know, three hours of video to review. So review, state law requires us to review all video prior to any release and requires us to blur, redact, or mute uh, 24 different categories of information, including deaths, dead bodies, violence resulting in bodily injury, um, any juveniles, we have to blur their faces out of the juveniles, nudity, any personal medical information, uh, social security numbers and driver's licenses uh, is just a few of the 24 categories. Um, that process of blurring and redacting um, can be done by the Axon software. However, it's a frame-by-frame -frame process that takes quite a bit of time. So you're not only reviewing the video for any of those categories of information, but then going through and, and uh, clicking a little box and, and blurring it out or uh, muting the video through those portions. Um, our direct costs are estimated to be uh, between 47 and 25 and 58.55 per hour, depending upon who in the department is doing the reviewing and the redaction. Um, we have proposed a fee schedule uh, that starts at $25 per recording and then goes up $20 for each additional half hour of preparation time. So it's based on the amount of time, how long the video is, is, is our fee is based on. Uh, that follows the guidance of the public access counselor the state statute caps any fee at $150 per recording, but also says that it must be based on direct costs. Um, in addition, these costs we are estimating as just our labor costs. You've also got the cost of the camera, the cost of the software, um, also to factor in with that, and the cost of data storage uh, that, that the Sheriff's Department takes on. Um, Again, this is a fee we, uh, we think is necessary to uh, promote the efficient use of county time and resources and also use to limit frivolous or fishing expeditions. Um, it, it, and we believe it's a reasonable fee for uh, getting a copy of the videos. Um, this one also, the funds go to the general fund and are not coming directly to the county department. Um, additionally, there is a, another section in the ordinance which uh, we've got a couple fees, a uh, fee of an incident report for a dollar and criminal background checks, uh, $10. We've had already been charging those, so this just updates. It, it didn't get changed in the ordinance, but the department has been charging those, so this just kind of updates that with what we've been charging. Those also are in line with what state statute allows us to charge. Um, the county's copy fee ordinance is a little bit behind the state statute, so. Thank you, sir. Any questions from counsel for the petitioner? Nope. Mr. Krasinski? <clears throat> Troy, Troy, if you, if you find that these fees start to run a little higher, can we adjust the, the rate? A absolutely. I mean, we, we just bring I'll, another I'll resolution, and uh, by run higher, what do you? Well, what is it? What is it going to be now? Right now, it's twenty-five dollar minimum per recording. And it can go as high as. It high. can go to a hundred and fifty if you've got a recording that would have to be uh, about six hours worth of video. So how often it need be? How often can you raise the fee? We once can a evaluate year, twice it. a year. Or? Yeah, we can evaluate it once or twice a year and, and um, make adjustments as necessary. Um, I, I will say, it, I kind of called around and talked to other departments. Uh, it varies. Um, so right now what we charge is based on the, the county statute is for a disc. So we charge uh, $10 for a disc. Um, they do the same thing next door at South Bend Police, although they're looking at doing something similar. Um, Indy also was charging per disc. They've made an ordinance like this, except instead of 25, they're using $40. Um, and then you've got other counties or other departments that are charging the maximum uh, 150. Um, Lafayette got slapped by the public access counselor and 
told to reevaluate that last year. So it, it's kind of all over the place, but it seems like most of the departments are going this way based on their actual labor costs for a fee. Um, so you're, you're comfortable with the 10 bucks then? Well, we prefer what we've proposed to you instead of per disc. Uh, yeah, I think I can put 18 hours of video on one disc, so. Mr. Canaretti? <clears throat> um, this, just in terms of a criminal proceeding or something, if, if one side has... So a cr criminal process is different. This is for public records requests. Okay. So a criminal proceeding through it's, it's, is mandatory sharing. So that right now goes into a system. It's evidence.com. The prosecutor right now has access to evidence.com and has hired a new person just to handle evidence.com, and then they share that with the defendant or the criminal defense attorney. So this is just on the public records side for an APRA. So no, neither side in a criminal case has to pay for that? Neither side, no. Okay. And that would be a violation. There would be some issues with that. But great. Thank yep, you. You're very, no, that's a great question. So I've been asked that a few times. So, Troy, you're saying that it would, with this fee structure, it would probably take like up like six hours to get to the 150. Is that what you just said? I think, quick math, it's about six hours. Yeah. Okay. And what would you project the average time would be spending on? Probably eight to ten hours of reviewing that and then going back and. Okay, yeah. that, that's kind of what I thought you yeah. were saying earlier yeah. because it's going to be very tedious and very time-consuming. Yeah. So there will be a lot of instances, if not most, that we will get up to the 150. We will get up to the one, okay. And we're not recouping. We're near, nowhere near recouping our, time. our real exactly. costs. Exactly. Because there's also, like I said, there's tech costs, okay. data. Uh, we're, you know, we're paying for storage of all this in, okay. in the cloud. And so, so based upon those figures you just gave me. The cameras are like three grand and, you know. Okay, those based are, upon those figures you, you just gave me, then it really is not going to be much of an advantage for us to raise the fee if we're going to get there anyway, based upon your estimation of the time it's going to take. I think that's fair. Correct? Yes. Yeah, that's correct. Okay. All right. You want to get short change. Exactly. Any other questions from council? We tried to bring two very reasonable. No, I appreciate proposals. it. No, that's why I asked that question. No, I appreciate it. And, uh, in, in, in light of kind of your assessment of how much time it takes, which seems super reasonable, um, why is the state cap kind of low? Good question. I don't know that question. Um, Maybe we should ask Mr. Niskoski that. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. I mean, just kidding, you know, doing yeah. the math, if you average about fifty bucks an hour. Yeah. You know, these would be hundreds and hundreds of dollars, and we're not recouping 30 percent of it. Yeah. I mean, that that's uh, a fair question. As far as part of it, what is you're projecting the time that it's going to take. Still want to make this accessible to the general public, right? For the most part. No, I'm saying the state cap. Yeah, the cap, yeah. I don't. I have trouble just keeping up with county laws. <laughs> don't. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank we've, you. We've noticed. <laughs> We've heard. Always oh, the jokes with Mr. Nolan. <laughs> Any other questions from council? Thank you. We'll now open the public hearing on Bill 5122. Does anyone wish to speak in favor of this bill? Does anyone wish to speak in opposition of the bill? Hearing none, I'll close the public hearing on 5122. Do I hear a motion? Move for approval. Second. Motion to pass, bill number 5122 is made by Councilman Canaricki. It was seconded by Councilman Nolan. Any further council discussion on this bill? Harry and clerk, will you please take the roll? Mr. Tansright? Yes. Mr. Canaricki? Yes. Mr. Root? Yes. Mr. Krasinski? Yes. Mr. Nolan? Yes. Ms. Hess? Yes. Mr. Fig? Yes. Mr. Morton? Yes. Motion carries 8 0. Thank you. Let the record show that bill number 5122 was passed by a vote of 8 0. <clears throat> Next on the agenda, we have salary am amendments. Clerk, will you please read bill number 4322? An ordinance amending ordinance 9521, the same being an ordinance establishing salaries and fixing the number of employees of St. Joseph County for the year 2022, Petitioner Health Department. Mr. Krasinski, committee report, please. 
President Morton, this comes to the council with a favorable recommendation. Thank you very much, sir. Petitioner? Uh, yes, Amy Rupi, Administrator with the Department of Health with offices on the 8th and 9th floor of the County City Building. And we are requesting to move one full-time nurse and their benefits to part-time in order to be able to recruit staff for our immunization clinic. Thank you. Any questions from council for the petitioner? Hearing none, we'll open a public hearing on Bill 4322. Does anyone wish to speak in favor of this bill? Does anyone wish to speak in opposition of the bill? Hearing none, the public hearing on 4322 is closed. Do I hear a motion? Do I hear a second? Second. Motion to pass bill number 4322 was made by Councilwoman Hess. It was seconded by Councilman Nolan. Any further council discussion on 4322? Hearing none, clerk, will you please take the roll? Mr. Kanarecki? Yes. Mr. Root? Yes. Mr. Krasinski? Yes. Mr. Nolan? Yes. Mr. File? Aye. Ms. Hess? Yes. <clears throat> Mr. Fig? Yes. Mr. Katanzarite? Yes. Mr. Morton? Yes. Motion carries 9-0. Let the record show that bill number 4322 was passed by a vote of 9-0. Clerk, will you please read the next bill on the agenda, bill number 4922. An ordinance amending ordinance 9521, the same being an ordinance establishing salaries and fixing the number of employees of St. Joseph County for the year 2022, Petitioner Health Department. Mr. Krasinski, committee report, please, sir. President Morton, bill 4922 comes with a favorable recommendation. Thank you very much. Petitioner. <clears throat> Yes, Amy Rupi with the Department of Health. And we are receiving funds from the Indiana Department of Health for our TB elimination program. We are wanting to use those funds to bring on board a staff member to be able to help out with our TB program, not as a nurse, but as a administrative assistant type role. Thank you, any questions from council on 4922? Hearing none, we'll open a public hearing on the bill. Does anyone wish to speak in favor of Bill 4922? Does anyone wish to speak in opposition of Bill 4922? Hearing none, I'll close the public hearing on the bill. Do I hear a motion? Move for approval. Do I hear a second? Second. Motion to pass Bill number 4922 was made by Councilwoman Hess. It was seconded by Councilman Kanariki. Any further council discussion on this bill? Hearing none, clerk, will you please take the roll? Mr. Root? Yes. Mr. Krasinski? Yes. Mr. Nolan? Yes. Mr. File? Aye. Ms. Hess? Yes. Mr. Fig? Yes. Mr. Katanzarite? Yes. Mr. Kanaraki? Yes. Mr. Morton? Yes. Motion carries 9 0. Thank you. I'd like the record show that bill number 4922 was passed by a vote of 9 0. Clerk, will you please read the next bill, bill number 44? An ordinance amending Ordinance 9521, the same being an ordinance establishing salaries and fixing the number of employees of St. Joseph County for the year 2022, Petitioner Superior Court. Mr. Krasinski, committee report, please, sir. President Morton, this comes to the council with a favorable recommendation. Thank you very much. Petitioner? Good evening. Uh, my name is Allie Rubel. I am the Superior Court Administrator with an office at 101 South Main Street. This uh, request represents a one-time transfer from a line item for the bailiff salary over to the administrative assistant salary uh, item in order to pay off comp time that has been accrued. Um, one of our superior court division, felony divisions has been without a bailiff for the last several months and we have an administrative assistant who has been performing double duty and we would like to pay out the comp time that she is accruing. Thank you. Any questions from council for the petitioner? Hearing none, we'll open a public hearing on Bill 4422. Does anyone wish to speak in favor of this bill? Does anyone wish to speak in opposition of the bill? Hearing none, I'll close the public hearing on 4422. Do I hear a motion? Passage. Do I hear a second? second? Motion to pass bill number 4422 was made by Councilman Kanariki. It was seconded by Councilwoman Hess. Any further council discussion on this bill? Hearing none, clerk, will you please take the roll? Mr. Krasinski? Yes. Mr. Nolan? Yes. Mr. File? Aye. Ms. Hess? Yes. Mr. Fig? Yes. Mr. Katanzarite? Yes. Mr. Kanarecki? Yes. Mr. Root? Yes. Mr. Morton? Yes. Motion carries 9 0. 
Thank you. I'd like the record show that bill number 4422 is passed by a vote of 9 to 0. Clerk, will you please read the next bill, bill number 4522. In ordinance amending ordinance 9521, the same being an ordinance establishing salaries and fixing the number of employees of St. Joseph County for the year 2022. Petitioner, peace out. Mr. Kaczynski, committee report, please, sir. <clears throat> President Martin, bill number 4522 comes with a favorable recommendation. Thank you very much. Petitioner. Good evening, Julie Toby, Interim Executive Director for the PSAP 58266 Downey Avenue. Um, we're here today asking to do an increase for our administrative manager's position to match the other manager positions. Um, with her large workload to keep everything flowing at our PSAP Center, it's very vital that we bring her up to the other manager levels. Um, we're asking to do an inline transfer of $9,210 from an IT assistant position that we are not filling to meet, make her up to that standard. Thank you. Any questions from council for the petitioner? What is the uh, percentage increase that you're talking about? What's it going for, John? Pet petitioner, stand, stand by. <laughs> Eighteen percent, Mr. File. Well, I don't know how many other people in our county are getting an 18% increase, so I have questions about it. What are they? This is the time. Can you hear me now? I'm sorry. <laughs> I just have questions as to an 18% increase. I don't see others in the county getting an 18% increase, so I have questions about no. that. I, I definitely understand that. Um, we have currently three other manager positions um she her workload is very vital for everything and all the tracking that goes on with 100 employees including the administrative staff um she definitely needs to be moved up to at least the manager level um we feel it's very vital to keep her in that position let her know that she's very appreciated for the work that she does for us I think other people in the county government could make a similar comment. Any other questions from Mr. File or any other council member, Mr. Katanjarite? Mrs. Toby? Yes. Just to clarify this, from what, from what I've seen in the documentation you submitted to us, um, PSAP being, it looks like, um, the fourth highest employee group in the county. Is your attempt, yeah. to, is your attempt here to create a pay equity to other managers of similar size departments so that this employee well, has, has equitable pay? Is that, is that what we're looking at? We're just trying to bring her up to our level. So we do have the fourth largest department and we only have one administrator where other departments have multiple administrators. Um, I know the health department has a couple. Um, Teresa, if she's on, she'll be able to speak more on that part of it. Um, but we are trying to get her to our manager level for our PSAP center. But it's very comparable to the other administrative positions within St. Joseph County. Thank you. That's helpful. Any other questions? Yeah, my other question is, we have a budget process coming up in uh, only about two months from now. So why don't we solve these kind of problems by our budget process instead of changing things before we have our budget process starting in only a couple months? This is budget neutral? It is. That's correct. It would be budget neutral. We have an IT assistant position that we got approved for for 2022 that we are not filling. So the funds would just come from that position that's already in the budget. Did you, did you hear that, Councilman File? Yeah, I heard it, but I don't agree with it. Just making sure you heard it. Any other questions from any council member? Hearing none, we'll open a public hearing on Bill 4522. Does anyone wish to speak in favor of this bill? President Morton, this is Andy Castellani, President of the San Jose County Board of Commissioners, offices on the seventh floor of the County City Building. I would like to speak in favor of this. 
Um, this is especially important now because we've got PSAP going through a transition. Um, Ray has left, so Julie's trying to, to kind of shore things up. And I think this is one of the ways that she's looking to do that. And quite frankly, if this is something that does not want to be continued for next year, then to, to council member files point, then it could be addressed in the budget for 2023. But especially since this is a budget neutral, revenue neutral item, I think it makes perfect sense and fully support it. Thank you. Does anyone, does anyone else wish to speak in favor of Bill 4522? Mr. Morton, Mike Cam, a St. Joe County Auditor with office on the second floor. I too would like to support this. It, uh, my chief deputy reports that uh, this individual has worked really well with our office and is highly competent and we would love to have some stability there. Thank you, sir. Is there anyone else that would like to speak in favor of Bill 4522? Is there anyone that would like to speak in opposition of Bill 4522? Hearing none, I'll close the public hearing on the bill. Do I hear a motion on 4522? Move for approval. Second. Motion to pass bill number 4522 was made by Councilman Nolan. It was seconded by Council. Woman Hess, a third was by Councilman Kanariki. <laughs> Any further comments on bill number 4522? Hearing that clerk, will you please take the roll? Mr. Nolan? Yes. Mr. File? No. Ms. Hess? Yes. Uh, Mr. Fig? Yes. Mr. Katanzarek? Yes. Mr. Kanariki? Yes. Mr. Root? Yes. Mr. Kaczynski? Yes. Uh, Mr. Morton. Yes. Motion carries 8 1. Thank you. I'd like the record show that Bill number 4522 was passed by a vote of 8 to 1. Clerk, will you please read the next bill on the agenda, Bill number 4722? An ordinance amending Ordinance 9521, the same being an ordinance establishing salaries and fixing the number of employees of St. Joseph County for the year 2022 petitioner, petitioner commissioners. Is it a more? This is Andy Castelli again. Mr. Castelli, one second, please, yep. sir. Ms. Hess, committee report, please. Uh, Mr. President, Bill number 4722 comes to the full council with a favorable recommendation. Thank you very much. Mr. Castelli. Apologize for my haste. Uh, Andy Castelli, President of the Board of Commissioners, Office of the Seventh Floor of the County City Building. Here before you tonight, um, as you know, Scott Seff, who was our IT director, took a position within the county to help us um, shepherd through many of the pr uh, projects that we have moving on from a technology standpoint. So we are now in search of a new IT director. So this is just um, bumping up the, the salary of the position by almost a little under $17,000 to hopefully make this a bit more attractive. Um, as I think we are all well aware, IT is as important a function as, as what happens in the county, especially in this era of cybersecurity and other things. We need to make sure that we have as strong an IT department as we possibly can. We'd love to answer any questions. Any questions from council? Hearing none, we'll open a public hearing on Bill 4722. Does anyone wish to speak in favor of this bill? Does anyone wish to speak in opposition of the bill? Hearing none, the public hearing on 4722 is now closed. Do so I hear a motion? Move for approval. Do I hear a second? Second. Motion to pass. Bill number 4722 was made by Councilman Nolan. It was seconded. By Councilwoman Hess, any further council discussion on this bill? Hearing none, clerk, will you please take the roll? Mr. File. Aye. Ms. Hess. Yes. Mr. Fig. Yes. Mr. Katanzari. Yes. Mr. Kanarecki. Yes. Mr. Root. Yes. Mr. Kaczynski. Yes. Uh, Mr. Nolan. Yes. Mr. Morton. Yes. Motion carries 9-0. Thank you. Let the record show that bill number 4722 was passed by a vote of 9-0. Thank next. you all. Next on the agenda is public hearing. Public comment on fiscal matters. All financial issues were heard and discussed at our March 22nd, 2022 committee meeting. Is there anyone who wishes to speak in favor of any financial issue on tonight's agenda? Is there anyone who wishes to speak in opposition of any financial issue on tonight's agenda? Hearing none, public comment is now closed. Clerk, will you please read bill number 4222? In order to appropriate and transferring monies for the purpose hearing specified for the separate departments hearing listed with St. Joseph County Government. We have a motion on bill number 4222. Motion for passage. Second. Motion to pass bill number 4222 
It's made by Councilman Katanjarite. It was seconded by Councilman Kanariki. Any further council discussion on this bill? Hearing none, clerk, will you please take the roll? Ms. Hess. Yes. Mr. Fig. Yes. Mr. Katanjarite. Yes. Mr. Kanariki. Yes. Mr. Root. Yes. Mr. Krasinski. Yes. Mr. Nolan. Yes. Mr. File. Aye. Mr. Morton. Yes. The motion carries 9-0. Thank you. Let the record show that bill number 4222 was passed by a vote of 9 to 0. <clears throat> Next, mm -hmm. public hearing, public comment on American Rescue Plan Fund. Clerk, will you please read bill number 4822? In order to appropriate monies for the purposes uh, here and specified from the American Rescue Plan Fund, petitioner, circuit, and superior court. Ms. Hess, committee report, please. Mr. President, uh, Bill number 4822 comes with a full council with a favorable recommendation. Thank you very much. Petitioner? Good evening, Mr. President, members of the council. My name is John Broden, St. Uh, Joseph's Circuit Court Judge. Offices are on the third floor of the um, uh, 1896 courthouse. Um, uh, we were very pleased to receive favorable recommendation at the previous meeting. Um, as you recall, this was, it was hoped uh, that we would receive this portion of the monies from the state through a state grant. Um, we thought we put an excellent grant proposal together. Uh, we were miffed uh, and, and remain so that we did not receive any state funding for this incredibly valuable project. But this is the second half, if you will, of a project to upgrade court technology in um, courthouse one, uh, courthouse two, and the Mishawaka courthouse uh, so that we could be on par with um, the felony courthouse and, and frankly on par with surrounding counties. Thank you for your consideration. Thank you. Any questions from counsel for Judge Broden? Thank you, Judge. Hearing none, we'll open a public hearing on Bill 4822. Does anyone wish to speak in favor of this bill? Does anyone wish to speak in opposition of the bill? Hearing none, I'll close the public hearing on 4822. Do I hear a motion? Motion for Second. A motion to pass Bill number 4822 was made by Councilman Nolan. It was seconded by Councilman Katandrite. Any further council discussion on this bill? <clears throat> hearing none, clerk, will you please take the roll? Mr. Fig? Yes. Mr. Katanzarite? Yes. Mr. Kanarecki? Yes. Mr. Root? Yes. Mr. Krasinski? Yes. Mr. Nolan? Yes. Mr. File? Aye. Ms. Hess? Yes. Mr. Morton? Yes. The motion carries 9-0. Thank you. Let the record show that Bill number 4822 was passed by a vote of 9-0. to zero. Next on the agenda, we have land use planning. Clerk, will you please read Bill number 3822? <coughs> 3822, resolution of the St. Joseph County Council declaring a portion of St. Joseph County an economic revitalization area pursuant to Indiana Code 6-1.1-12.1-1, et cetera. Petitioner, EVS Limited. Mr. Nolan, committee report, please, sir. Mr. President, bill number 39-22 comes to the full council with a favorable recommendation. Thank you, sir. Good evening, council members. Chris Brown, Economic Development Specialist with Department of Infrastructure Planning and Growth, offices on the 7th and 11th floors of this building. Uh, before you tonight is a resolution for a tax abatement request for real and personal property uh, tax abatement for property at 24500 Research Drive, uh, which is in uh, District A. I believe Jen is getting the presentation up. Uh, so the property uh, on the map is in green, so ooh. There. Nope, you're fine. So uh, property is in green, so right here uh, to the east of that is Edison and US 31. The airport is kind of over where the... Uh, the members of the Zoom call are, um, just to give you an idea. 
Uh, so they are looking at building a new uh, facility on this property. Um, they, the petitioner is a leader in emergency vehicles, uh, safety and innovation, having created more ambulance seats, uh, ambulance child safety seating products than any other company in the United States. Uh, currently operating out of the South Bend or the Sample Street Business Complex. Uh, they've been operating there for about 25 years. They're looking to expand. That facility is no longer uh, meeting their demands uh, to move their business forward. Uh, they are looking at uh, building a new 50,000 square foot facility at an approximate construction cost of $6 million. And then uh, within that, a, they're requesting a personal property tax abatement on investment of approximately 300,000 in new equipment for that facility. The expansion is anticipated to create 11 jobs while also retaining all of the uh, jobs that they currently have in St. Joe County. Uh, petitioner has filed all the necessary forms and all of the necessary fees have been paid. Uh, we are working through the workbook. It's just about finalized uh, and we'll bring that to you uh, during the confirming part of this process. Uh, economic development staff are excited about this project and we ask for your support uh, in declaring this an economic revitalization revitalization area, that's a mouthful, um, as defined in Indiana Code. Happy to answer any questions. Petitioner is also here to make some additional comments. Thank you. Any questions from Council, for Mr. Brown? Thank you, sir. Petitioner? Please state your name and address for the record. You have five minutes to address the Council. Hello, my name is Joe Dooley. I work at EVS Limited. Uh, we'd like to say thank you to the St. Joe, St. Joe County Council getting us to this point. This is a massive undertaking for a company of our size. We've been in business just under 29 years. We've been in the Sample Street Business Complex for about 25 years. And um, our mission is child safety. We make seats for ambulances. EVS is emergency vehicle seating. Uh, it's a great story, started by uh, an exciting entrepreneur, started building the seats in his garage here in South Bend, and they moved into the Sample Street Business Complex 25 years ago with an innovative safety seat that can transport an uninjured child in the back of an ambulance. We became the standard for the last 20 years in the industry. We sell seats all over the world. It, our time in the Sample Street Business Complex has served us well, but it's a uh, primarily driven for companies smaller than we are now. We've been growing steadily. I joined the company personally in 2017 when we had 25 employees. We now have 48. Uh, it's extraordinarily difficult to hire employees in the building. There's uh, very limited parking, tough to access. There's no air conditioning. It's over 100 degrees in the building during the summer. And what has really um, saved our bacon is our, is our ownership model. We are 100% employee stock ownership. The founder of the company sold his shares to the owners in 2015. So um, it's a great model. Our employees act like owners and we make the best product out there. This is a, a massive investment, millions of dollars. Um, and to make all the numbers work, uh, these tax savings will green light the project. We are going to expand into another area that commonly goes by mobility, which is uh, making cushions for other vehicles. So we can make cushions for um, you know ATVs and snowmobiles and golf carts, but you know medical scooters and, and dialysis buses, and things related to the medical industry. We have so much pent up demand and we simply can't do it in our current building. So for years we've been looking at existing buildings here in the county um, and they just didn't work out. They, they don't have enough parking, they don't have enough bathrooms, so we decided uh, once and for all to uh, seriously consider spending this amount of money. And we're, we're happy to answer um, any questions, but th this tax savings really makes the numbers work and um, we'll be able to go, go forward with the project. Thank you. Any Thanks. questions from counsel for the petitioner? Hearing none, we'll open a public hearing on bill number 3822. Does anyone wish to speak in favor of this bill? Does anyone wish to speak or not? I'm sorry? In favor, please. Please state your name and address for the record, ma'am. Sure. 
121 Shamrock Street in Walkerton, Indiana. And please don't look at what I do for a living, but it kind of ties in. I just wanted to make a quick comment about this company. At one point in my career, um, as it now, I am an advocate for child safety. And I just wanted to mention that we had an instructor who asked this company for a standalone seat on a pedestal that they actually produced for us so that we could train those people at the hospital and the fire department and the police department who help parents get children properly restrained. They provided a couple of those seats for us and built exactly what was needed to get the professional people trained in an effort to make the kids in our community safer. So I just wanted to speak in favor because I believe wholeheartedly as a person who lives and works in our community in what they do. Thank you. Thank you very much. I didn't, ma'am, I, I apologize. I didn't know you were, I, didn't, I apologize. I didn't know you were coming up to no, speak it's okay. in favor. I thought you were maybe coming up to re either remove Mr. Studer or Mr. Dan. <laughs> <laughs> I actually debated the, the, eth the ethics of speaking in uniform as opposed to being a private person, and I feel like this is an important enough um, issue in our community, and I feel like they really do give back to our community as a whole and as um, emergency responders, they make it much easier for us to do certain parts of our job. No, thank you, thank you very much. Thank we appreciate you. your comments. Is there anyone else who, that wishes to speak in favor of this bill? President Morton, yes, sir. Andy Castelny, Commissioner, seventh floor. I just wanna add uh, just number one, thanks to our economic development department for helping facilitate this. This is a great example of how a county can help out an industry that's been serving our community and, and quite frankly, the, you know, the, the region in the United States if not the world for a number of years, and how we can help them grow and, and quite frankly become another industry leader here in St. Joseph County. So I think that these are the kind of projects that, that don't always get a lot of the press, but are so exciting, and we're so very grateful that they are continuing to stay in St. Joseph County. So I completely support this. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else that wishes to speak in favor of Bill 3822? Is there anyone that wishes to speak in opposition of Bill 3822? Hearing none, I'll close the public hearing on 3822. Do I hear a motion on the bill? Move to passage. Second. Motion to pass. Bill number 3822 was made by Councilman Canarecki. It was seconded by Councilwoman Hess. Any further comments from any council member on this bill? Hearing none, clerk, will you please take the roll? Mr. Katan's right. Absolutely. Yes. <laughs> Mr. Canarecki. Yes. Mr. Root. Yes. Mr. Krasinski. Yes. Mr. Nolan. Yes. Mr. File. Aye. Ms. Hess. Yes. Mr. Fig. Yes. Mr. Morton. Yes. Motion carries 9-0. Thank you. Let the record show that Bill number 3822 was passed by a vote of 9-0. Thank you very much. Clerk, will you please read the next bill, Bill number 3922. <clears throat> Northern submitting and supplementing Title 15 land use is Chapter 154 Planning and Zoning of the St. Joseph County Code is amended for property located at 13750 McKinley Highway and unaddressed 1.41 acres abutting to the south from our single family district to I industrial district. Petitioner, Penn Township of St. Joseph County, Indiana. Thank you. Mr. Nolan, committee report, please, sir. Mr. President, bill number 39-22 comes to the full council without a recommendation. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Hi, Ryan Fells with the Area Plan Commission staff with offices on the 11th floor as part of the Department of Infrastructure Planning and Growth. Here you see the proposed rezoning is the former Penn Fire Station just east of Capitol Avenue. The property to the north and west is zoned industrial. To the east is our single family district. While property further east is rezoned to C commercial district, not site plan specific in 2020. And to the south is Willow Creek Trails subdivision zoned our single family district. And here's an aerial view. East along McKinley, west along McKinley. And looking southeast toward the Willow Creek Trail subdivision Willow Creek runs along the southeast of this property. It is a county drain with a 75 foot wide easement from the top of each bank. The site plan shows the existing conditions. Any changes to the property would be required to go through commercial plan review. 
At that time, the property will need to be brought into compliance with the development standards of the zoning ordinance, including landscaping, lighting, parking, etc. A question was raised at the council committee meeting regarding required setbacks for commercial versus industrial zoning. Industrial requires 50 feet adjacent to residential, whereas commercial requires 40 feet adjacent to residential. Outdoor storage must be an enclosed building or screened in both districts. The landscaping requirements for commercial and industrial districts adjacent to residential are the same, which is type two, full screening uh, landscaping, which is a minimum of four evergreens, which are six feet high, every 30 feet along the residential lot line, adjacent line. Evergreens must be evenly spaced in staggered double row where the rows are not more than 12 and a half feet apart. And in the event that uh, they want to use narrow spread evergreens such as Arborvitae, they may only be used a maximum of 10% of the required number of evergreens at a rate of four narrow spread evergreens at four feet high for each evergreen that is normally six feet high. So very limited in scope if you do smaller evergreens. And moving on to the, uh, this uh, looking is the five criteria based in state law, one of which is uh, uh, the future land use map of the comprehensive plan shows this area is intended for industrial. And based on all of this, the Area Plan Commission favorably recommends this rezoning petition. The petitioner is available as well, and I'd be happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Any questions from Council? Petitioner? Mr. President, members of the Council, good evening. My name is Stephen Studer and I'm an attorney with the law firm McCreek Default with offices at 4101 Edison Lake Parkway, Mishawaka. With me this evening is my uh, uh, bond person, Mr. Mike Danch of Danch Hardin Associates, in case I do get arrested. Um, we're here this evening representing Penn Township, which is attempting to sell this former fire station. The former fire station has been replaced by a brand new fire station, as many of you know, which is close to the Penn High School. Uh, we're seeking to be cha change this from residential to industrial. And this petition, as you've just heard, has supported the staff. It also has a unanimous vote of the Area Plan Commission to favor that. And I would also point out that one of the contiguous property owners is the Penn Harris Madison Township uh, School, I'm sorry, Penn Harris Madison Schools. And Mr. Thacker, who's a member of the Area Plan Commission, also voted in favor of this petition. Um, industrial, as you've already heard, is supported by the comprehensive plan and the future land use plan. The potential user is an electro co electrical contractor. Uh, He's been in business for, for over 20 years, as represented at the University of Notre Dame in terms of electrical contracting for over 20 years. Uh, he is moving 40 employees to this location, and he needs the outside storage. And um, for such items as wire spools and things of that nature, typical stuff you use in an in a, in electrical contractor. This is not heavy industrial, but we do need the outside storage. The buyer understands the restrictions of the site, and one of the reasons we picked industrial, as you can see from what Mr. Fellows mentioned, is that industrial actually has a greater setback for the residential than would commercial. So we kind of went with a more conservative approach, believe it or not, so that we were farther away from the residential area than we would be if we did commercial. But it still gives us the outside storage that we need. Uh, I would ask at this time Mr. Michael Danch uh, come forward to explain any other questions you might have with respect to the site plan. Uh, other than that, I'm happy to answer any questions. We would certainly seek your approval to rezone this to industrial. Thank you. Mike Danch from Danch Harner Associates, 1643 Commerce Drive here in South Bend, also uh, representing the petitioner. A couple of things that uh, Ryan uh, mentioned about the restrictions for that outside storage and things to take into account on this particular site. This building is serviced by a uh, septic system and well. So when you talk about outside storage areas, they're also gonna have restrictions on how much area they can actually put outside storage in. 
if they have to replace the septic system, they're going to have to go through the health department and they'll have to put a new septic system in. It can't be anywhere near where the ditch is. So that's going to start limiting the area where that new septic field can be located. It also has to have a separation distance from a well. Uh, this is not serviced by a municipal water for this particular location. So that is also a restriction. And uh, under the ordinance, because they're within 500 foot of a residential district, the height of the outside storage is limited to the height of the fence for the storage area. And the maximum height of that fence is 10 feet. So again, they'll be limited by what they can do for the outside storage. So anywhere that you would take a look on this particular site, because it has to be screened from the public right of ways as well, any outside storage most likely would end up on that very western portion of the site where it backs up and is adjacent to the uh, AEP industrial uh, site that's there. And it'd be completely away from that residential area. And if you have any questions for me, I'd be glad to answer them. Thank you. Any questions from council for Mr. Dance or Mr. Studer? Mr. Kanarecki? Thank you. Um, just in terms of the outside storage, you mentioned <coughs> wire spools and that sort of thing. Um, would there be anything like transformers that have oil in them or anything, just in concerns with uh, being adjacent to the creek? No, they, and they have to be careful with, with that also. So they have to be working with the health department as well. They'll have to go through final site plan approval. Most of any outside storage that you do has to be on an impervious surface, which would be concrete and or asphalt pavement. Uh, John McNamara would also be involved as the uh, county surveyor and the county drainage board. They would want to be taking a look at the basically the engineered final site plan, which has to address drainage. So one of your questions is any surface runoff created by any of the outside storage materials that are there they have to make sure they're meeting all the clean water standards as well. So that, that would be very important. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions from any council member? Okay. Hearing number, we'll open a public hearing on bill number 3922. Does anyone wish to speak in favor of this bill? Does anyone wish to speak in opposition of the bill? <coughs> hearing none, I'll close the public hearing. Do I hear a motion on 3922? Passage. Do I hear a second? Second. Motion to pass bill number 3922 was made by Councilman Katanzarite and was seconded by Councilman Root. Any further council discussion on bill 3922? Hearing none, clerk, will you please take the roll? Mr. Kenarecki? Yes. Mr. Root? Yes. <coughs> Mr. Krasinski? Yes. Mr. Nolan? Yes. <coughs> Mr. File? Aye. Ms. Hess? Yes. Mr. Fig? Yes. Mr. Katan's right? Yes. Mr. Morton? Yes. Motion carries 9 0. Thank you. Let the record show that Bill number 3922 was passed by a vote of 9 to 0. Um, on Bill number 4022 and 4122, we will have a combined public hearing and a separate vote. So, Clerk, will you please read both Bill number 4022 and 4122? <clears throat> please, sir. Yep. 4022, an ordinance amending and supplementing Title 15 Land Uses Chapter 154 Planning and Zoning of the St. Joseph County Code as amended for property located at 56435 Oak Road and 56369 Oak Road from R Single Family District to C Commercial District. Petitioner, Sons Property Holdings, LLC. Bill number 4122, an ordinance approving the petition for a special use filed by Sons Property Holdings, LLC, for property being located at 56435 Oak Road and 56369 Oak Road. Petitioner, Sons Property Holdings, LLC. Mr. Nolan, could me report, please, sir, on 4022 and 4122? <clears throat> Mr. President, as luck would have it, both Bill number 40-22 and 41-22 come to the full council with a similar favorable recommendations. Thank you, sir. Okay, Ryan Fells, Area Planning Commission staff again. And there we go. The proposed rezoning is on the north side of Western Avenue, State Route 2, along the Oak Road, um, uh, across the road from Weller Auto Parts. And here's the view of the property looking west along State Road 2. 
and looking east and looking south along Oak Road. The site plan shows uh, one zoning lot, which includes two parcels totaling 5.73 acres, more or less. Site plan shows a new building for a contractor with a gross floor area of 14,798 square feet. Based on the five criteria in state law, the Area Plan Commission favorably recommends this rezoning petition. And based on the four criteria of the special use part of the state law, the Area Plan Commission favorably recommends this special use permit to allow a contractor yard and offices with outdoor storage up to 50% of gross area lot area. And the petitioner is available, and I'm also available to answer any questions. Any questions from council for area plan? Thank you, petitioner. Good evening, council. My name is Chet Gamble. I'm here from CTG Associates. We're preparing the documentation for the rezoning and for the building. Uh, actually, since it comes to the council with a favorable recommendation, I'll be better to say that I'll answer any questions you have before I answer something I shouldn't do. <laughs> uh, the property is going to be used by, for <clears throat> irrigation solutions. It's a company that does commercial irrigation, such as you might see as you traverse down Western Avenue in the summer. Uh, the storage and the contractor yard, which is the other part of this, would be steel pipe. Uh, and or steel angle things that they use in fabricating the commercial irrigation equipment, uh, not transformers or motors or that kind of stuff. Thank you. Any questions from Council for the Petitioner? Mr. Katanzari. Right? Mr. Gamble, uh, I'm not up to snuff, I don't think, on uh, building code, but do you know you're, you're a developer or a architect? Yes, sir. Yeah. Is it going to be required to be sprinkled with a fire sprinkler system? Given uh, this building uh, does not require to be fire sprinkled because uh, it is divided uh, by a two-hour firewall, uh, in making it in compartments that uh, meet the state requirement for not being fire sprinkled. If uh, the building was to get larger without a firewall, then it would have to be sprinkled. And the owner is aware of that. Thank you. Any other questions from council? For the petitioner? Hearing none, I'll open a public hearing on Bill 4022 and 4122. Does anyone, anyone wish to speak in favor of either of these bills? Does anyone wish to speak in opposition of either of these bills? Hearing none, hearing none I'll close the public hearing <clears throat> on Bill 4022 and 4122. May I have a motion on Bill 4022? Motion for approval. Go here a second. Second. A motion on Bill 4022 mm -hmm. is made by Councilman Krasinski, seconded by Councilman Kanareki. Any further council discussion on Bill 4022? Hearing no clerk, please, please take the roll. Mr. Root? Yes. Mr. Krasinski? Yes. Mr. Nolan? Yes. Mr. File? Aye. Ms. Hess? Yes. Mr. Fig? Yes. Mr. Katanzarite? Yes. Mr. Kanarecki? Yes. Mr. Morton? Yes. Motion carries 9 0. Thank you. Let the record show that Bill number 40 22 was passed by a vote of 9 to 0. 9 to 0. We have a motion on Bill number 41 22. Approved passage. Do I hear a second? Second. Motion to pass Bill number 41 22 was made by Councilman Kanarecki. It was seconded by Councilman Krasinski. Any further council discussion on 41 22? Hearing no clerk, please, please take the roll. Mr. Krasinski? Yes. Mr. Nolan? Yes. Mr. File? Aye. Ms. Hess? Yes. Mr. Fig? Yes. Mr. Katanzari? Yes. Mr. Kanraki? Yes. Mr. Root? Yes. Mr. Morton? Yes. Motion carries 9 to 0. Thank you. Let the record show that Bill number 41 22 was passed by a vote of 9 to 0. That concludes our public hearing as far as our bills for this evening. Next on the agenda is miscellaneous items. Next is unfinished business. Next is new business. Next is privilege of the floor, limited to three minutes on items not on tonight's agenda.
Good evening. Deborah Durrell, 21677 Otten Road, South Bend. I'd like to read from Richard Blanco, How to Love a Country. Those picture books from grade school days, pilgrims in tall hats, their gold buckled shoes. Life, liberty, happiness for we, the people singing of shining seas crossed, the spacious skies of a God-blessed land when a song and a book were all I knew of country. I remember my eyes on a map mes mesmerized by faraway cities, the rocky spine, the blue stare of the Great Lakes, and the endless shoulders of coastlines, the curvy hips of harbors and rivers. What I knew of country was only what I read from a map. I wanted to live in the house I dreamed from television, cushy sofas, crystal sand candy dishes, children with allowances and perfect teeth. Though the gunfire blood of war beamed into my bedroom, fantasy was still all I could believe of country. I didn't want to change the channel, but I did. I lifted the shades, let light shine on the carpets, stained with lies I'd missed, and saw the dust of secrets settled over the photos. How could you, America? With no answer for all I knew of country was my hurt and rage. But home was home. I dusted off the secrets, cleaned up the lies, and sat with history books I'd never opened, listened to songs I'd never played, pulled out the old map from a dark drawer, redrew it with more colors and less lines. Until finally, okay, nothing's perfect, I understood. I forgive you, I said, and forgiveness became my country. I stayed, you stayed, we stayed for our boys and girls, returning as heroes, some without legs or arms, for our challenger, and towers fainting from the sky for the terrified lives of the Big Easy, stranded like flightless birds on roofs for the sea that drowned our north. But we swept each grain of sand back to shore for the candles we lit for our 20 children of Sandy Hook, feeling what we've always felt. To know a country takes all we know of love. Some days better than others, but never easy to keep our promise every morning of every year of every century and wake up, stumble downstairs with all our raging hope sit down at the kitchen table again, still blurry-eyed, still tired, and say, listen, we need to talk. Thank you for setting a good example for talking and working together. We need and can handle a lot more of that. Thank you very much. Good evening, Dan Caruso, 305 Compton Street. Uh, I've got some free advice tonight. It's retirement advice, and that doesn't come free around here usually. Um, if you should have somebody come to your home, one, two, four people, and present you with paperwork saying you should retire or, or resign, and then accompany that with veiled threats of some things that may happen if you don't sign the dotted line there. It would be, unless your family is the Manson family, it would be so much better to get retirement advice, life advice, health advice from loved ones. Again, not the Mansons. Do not feel, feel threatened by people at work who you do respect because you've worked with them, but they do, in, in many instances, and in this particular instance, which I think you are, already know who I'm talking about, do not have your best interests in mind. Thank you. Thank you. May I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Very second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Or do, I, do we need a voice vote? <laughs> voice vote, Mr. Hammond. Roll call, sir, I mean. Sorry about that. You woke me up. <sighs> Mr. Nolan. No. You dog. <laughs> you just...
not my friend. Mr. File. I'm in favor of adjournment. Aye. Ms. Hess. Yes. Mr. Fig. Yes. <laughs> Mr. Tens, right? No. <laughs> Mr. Kanarecki. No. God. You're going to make me count. Mr. Root. No. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> Mr. Krasinski. It's up to you, Bobby. You get to decide. Come on, dog. Yes. <laughs> Mr. Morton. Yes. <laughs> motion carries, I think, 5 4. What's, <clears throat> yeah, you, what's the count? The, uh, I, 5 4. <laughs> To adjourn. <laughs> Glad we made let's, it. Let's, let's ask that question. The meeting's over. <laughs> <laughs> this meeting is adjourned. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>